Dr. Dan the Preacher Man here, and I'm in my other office, my chaplain's office, and uh, in light of what happened in Texas where they had the shooting in the church, a couple things come to mind. I know there's a national discussion on gun control and a national discussion on whether churches should have security or any type of uh, firearms there. Let me just read from Scripture. I'll be reading from Luke's Gospel, chapter 22. And he said unto them, When I sent you without purse and script and shoes, lacked ye anything? And they said nothing. Then he said unto them, But now he that has a purse, let him take it, and likewise his, his script. And he that has no sword, let him sell his garment and buy one. For I say unto you that this that is written must yet be accomplished in me. And he was reckoned among the transgressors for the things concerning me have an end. And they said, Lord, behold, here are two swords. And he said unto them, It is enough. Okay. So Jesus has just finished praying in the Garden of Olives, uh, Mount Olives. He's getting ready to face those who would arrest him. And he's also telling them the time has come where things are going to change in their mission work. Before he had sent them out without anything, basically go preach the gospel, depending upon the uh, uh, hospitality of the local communities where they would go. If they were rejected, they were to knock the dust off their feet. But they were to depend upon the hospitality of those local Jewish communities to uh, receive support and help. With that, uh, they went unarmed, and they went into uh, basically what one would consider semi-friendly communities. Because some would be friendly and some would not, but they wouldn't be attacked or murdered or killed from what we from what we know. Now they're facing a more difficult task. And he says, after this, they're going to need support and even ability to defend themselves. Now, the two swords here mentioned, the, the word in uh, Greek could actually mean like a dagger, a knife. I, they're basically sidearms. Uh, many times the people in that part of the world would... Uh, uh, carry some form of self-defense. Um, usually, you know, again, with a knife that we would consider today like a Bowie knife, uh, something that you could defend yourself because there was plenty of robbers and there was, uh, you know, bad people out there that would try to rob you on the road. We, we know this from the uh, parable of the Good Samaritan where a Jewish man was, uh, uh, was uh, found naked, robbed, and beaten, and the Good Samaritan came along and helped him out. Had he been armed, maybe there might have been a different outcome. Who knows? But he wasn't armed and he was beaten and robbed and left naked. So, what Jesus is saying here is that that was enough. Of course, they also had something else they, they often over, overlooked, and that was Jesus. He was there. And, of course, we know later that uh, Peter would embarrass himself by cutting off the ear of uh, Malchus, one of the uh, servants to the priest. And Jesus would pick up the ear and put it back on the man. And, uh, another little miracle that people often overlook. So, in light of this, uh, some people say whether we should be armed or not, we have Christ's word right here. And, of course, it's a sidearm. And what's a sidearm today? It would be a handgun. Um, that's what a handgun is. It's a sidearm. In the military, you have your primary weapon, which would be your rifle, your, your machine gun, uh, or maybe you're a mortar man. Um, that would be your primary arm. And then you would carry something on your side. And, you know, when I was in the Army, it was either the, a 1911 uh, and 45 caliber or later on the Beretta 9mm. But it was a side arm. It's something that you would use when you run out of bullets for your rifle or your machine gun and you're in a melee situation or a skirmish situation where people are all on top of you and you were just using the pistol to get them off to you so you can get back to a better weapon. In uh, civil society, uh, a sidearm would either be concealed or open carry depending upon uh, where you lived in the United States when it was being developed as we moved out west. Again, it was uh, primarily for self-defense purposes. I know bad people use it for evil purposes. So what we've seen here recently is that uh, an evil man, an evil crazy man, killed a bunch of people in church. And it's because there's an assumption that churches are gun-free zones. Easy targets for evil people. And evil people, by the way, are cowards. This man was cowardly. When he was confronted with a good man with a gun, he was shot and he ran. 
because he's a coward. So, you know, people who are wise and smart will arm themselves. Now, some people have said, well, what good does all that praying do? Well, if you don't believe in God, it does nothing. But those of us who believe in God, what it does for us, when we pray, we set our mind on the things of God. And it also gets us out of that emotional state. You know, if we operated on emotion, we'd be no different than the, the evil man that went into the, to the church. See, we have to seek the mind of Christ so we can rise up and do what is right to protect our own and to promote the good news of Jesus Christ. That's why we pray. Yes, we do believe in a God that intervenes, but a lot of times he intervenes through people. He loves working through people. We're not perfect. But I remember seeing, a, uh, it was either a bumper sticker or the title of a book, that uh, God loves working through cracked pots because his light shines through our cracks. And that's what we are. We are broken beings, failed fragile human beings who have been transformed by Christ, having the Holy Spirit sealing us and indwelling us, that we remain connected with them. And as we submit to God, and prayer is one way we submit, and we submit to his word, will, and way, then God's work can be accomplished. Yes, God can intervene if he so chooses. But sometimes God intervenes in ways that we can't comprehend. So that's what I'll say on that. Should churches have uh, armed security guards? Yes. Should people have uh, be allowed to carry inside a church? I would certainly think that having one or two available, as Jesus said, that two was sufficient. And that's all you need. Because evil people are cowards. And you just show a sign of strength against a coward, just like the lion that Peter speaks of, that the devil is like a roaring lion seeking who he will devour. What does he say? Stand. So let us take a stand. Let us be sufficiently armed. Let us be secure in, our, in the spirit. And let us pray always to be more like Christ, all that we say, do, and are. Thank you for watching. Take care. And God bless.